And so the whole Vice President Biden moonshot initiative mm -hmm. um, is all the rage these days, yes. and I know he's speaking a little later today. Mm -hmm. So at force, and also for you and your opinion, how do you think his initiative is going to be advancing cancer research and care? Well, as we all know, that there's a critical need for funding for research in all aspects of health, but in cancer research in particular, which would be my passion. And so President Biden and this Moon Sutrat initiative, bringing together the Blue Ribbon Panel and really focusing effort, new effort on cancer. It's not as if we haven't been focusing on cancer before. Obviously, this is a huge meeting. Mm -hmm. Tons of people have been focusing on it. But to bring new lights, some more discussion, and start putting more resources towards the next steps that can really change from where we've been in the past to where we're going. At this time when genomics and genetics, tumor sequencing versus um, sequencing for inherited mutations, all these are coming together to bring together and to break down some silos and really move forward is exciting to all of us. So FORCE is thrilled with the initiative. It is really exciting. Yeah. And so I know you came upon FORCE when you were going through a personal journey of hereditary cancer. Yes. Can you tell us a little bit about that? So yes, so I found FORCE in 2008. Um, my mother is a long-term ovarian cancer survivor. She was diagnosed in 2001 and she is still 15 years later with us and doing her thing. And so she, when she was diagnosed in 2001, she had a mother with breast cancer that was in her 50s. And so in 2001, that was not necessarily indicative quickly Mm -hmm. of testing. It wasn't a family where there was, you know, many, many women that were affected by cancer. So there was a little discussion, but she didn't do it. She had a relapse in 2006. It's like, oh, well, ovarian, you know, we're seeing higher, maybe we'll think about it. And over the next few years, she finally went ahead and had testing. And she has a BRCA1 mutation, mm -hmm. and then I had testing, and I have a BRCA1 mutation. And I found force for her because I was looking for high quality uh, resources. I always said, um, you know, I wanted her to be able to get the information she needed and look at it on her own time, but I wanted to make sure she was going towards the best quality sources. And I was so impressed with the level of expertise, that everything was referenced, everything was expert reviewed, beautiful advisory board, that I took her out to the conference. I met the four staff, I met Sue Freeman, our founder, who's an amazing woman. Mm -hmm. um, and just had to volunteer, and eventually here I am. <laughs> That's wonderful. You have such an interesting perspective being both a patient advocate and a pre-viver yourself. Yes, and yeah. I'm lucky that I've got the scientific training and education training to bring all of that together mm -hmm. and do the best to help our community and help advocate for increased research so that, so that 20 years from now, a woman with a BRCA mutation will have different options and different decision making than I had I was lucky I didn't have ovarian cancer like my mother. I hope that one day, you know, my daughters will have better interventions than the ones that we have there. But I feel so lucky that I'm here and my risk of cancer has been reduced um, through what I've done that I can move on. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much for sitting oh, with me you. today. And I hope you enjoy the rest of ASCO. Oh, of course, you too. Thank you so much. Thank you.